everyone. In the previous video, Sebastian has talked about different opportunities on how to control systems, so to manipulate their behavior in time. Besides model predictive control, we also have other, let's say, data-inspired or data-driven methods in order to uh, find control policies. And in this and the next video, I would like to talk a little bit about the so-called DPC method, the differential predictive control method, which is somehow related to model predictive control, which we have seen previously, but it also different. So in the DPC method, what we actually want to do is we want to again minimize with respect to some parameters W, where we will see these parameters you will see in two minutes, some cost function, and we consider a standard cost function for control, which is the sum of K equals one until capital N of a so-called stage cost term, small n, depending on YK, RK, and UK. So that's the so-called stage cost. And YK, of course, is the output of a system. RFK is a reference, so some external quantity, some external signal we want to reach, and U of K is our control action. Uh, normally the reference is given, and of course the um, output of a system is subject to some system dynamics. So as a side constraint, subject to, we assume that we have some sub sub system description, which can be arbitrarily nonlinear, so x dot is f of x of t and u of t, and y of t is g of x of t and u of t as a measurement equation. So that's basically this y of t comes as a result of some starting state x0 and the control actions such that the output of the system is manipulated. Um, the interesting thing with DPC, so with differential predictive control, is that we assume so far that we have knowledge about the model, about the system dynamics, because we will need a differentiable model description in order to get things going. Um, so in these examples, which we will see later, we will just assume that we have this knowledge beforehand, just for the sake of simplicity, because the focus will be on DPC. However, we can, of course, take into account any of the previous methods on nonlinear or linear model identification in order to get a proxy of this uh, dynamic model description and then utilize this identified model in order to do DPC, okay? So that's uh, perfectly combinable, but here for the sake of simplicity, because we are focusing on the control methods, we assume that we have F and G given or a very good approximation of it. Um, as this is a continuous time representation, so an ODE representation, and we perform a stage cost evaluation on this discrete time grid, we also need to take into account that our time steps tk plus one are on a discrete time step grid with tk plus delta t, and delta t is our step time, which is constant. Okay, um, if we look at this let's say objective, this problem definition, one thing is missing and this is also a genuine element to uh, DPC in contrast to model predictive control. In model predictive control, what we have done here is basically we took the model and we did a prediction towards the future with a limited prediction horizon and then tried to utilize normal optimization solvers for a sequence of U which minimize this cost function. So that's basically having a model and predicting into the future. DPC, so differential predictive control, is a little bit different in that sense that we try to get a control action sequence u of t as an explicit function. And this S explicit function is a so-called control, control policy pi with these parameters w, which we want to optimize for, and the control policy is depending on the output of the system and, of course, the reference which we want to pursue, right? 
So that's a control policy. This is our control policy. And in DPC, we consider specifically functions which are differentiable, such as artificial neural networks, as a representation of this control policy, which are represented by some parameter weights w. And then we plug in this explicit control function into our problem formulation and basically get a closed form optimization problem, like a supervised machine learning problem. And the outcome of this supervised machine learning problem is in near to optimal control policy, or, or ideally if we are successful, a near to optimal control policy pi with respect to uh, the parameters w, which will minimize this cost function. So that basically means we do not really predict into the future in terms of doing an explicit prediction into the future, but we have a direct relation from our current output observation and our current reference observation to a control action, right? So this is basically an explicit relation. In model predictive control, this relation was more like implicit because I rolled on a model into the future and then solved over this model prediction, which is basically not done here uh, explicitly because we have this control policy. The let's say cartoonic block diagram of DPC is then also that of a standard control loop. So we have some reference R of t, which we are going to subtract with respect to the output y of t. And this goes into our control policy pi with respect to the parameters w. This control policy outputs the control actions u, which are fed into the plant system. So with plant system, of course, I mean our system response, our system dynamics, and the plant response is then y. So that's u of t and that's y of t. And in order to close the feedback loop, we do this. However, as the control policy is not only dependent on the control error, e of t, we can also directly consider feed-throughs in terms of the reference and the output which directly goes into the input of this control policy in order to find an explicit policy which solves our optimization problem in terms of manipulating the system. So what is the interesting, um, let's say, advantage of differential predictive control? For example, if we compare it to model predictive control, that is that in general, we can apply this to arbitrarily linear and nonlinear systems. If you have watched already one of the previous videos of Sebastian, there we have seen that if we want to apply model predictive control in the standard linear fashion to a nonlinear system, that we need to apply some tricks, basically linearization, and in the DPC problem that is not required. Also, if algorithmically we implement this entire control loop this controlled system in a differentiable way. So for example, using uh, the normal Julia um, programming toolboxes, then of course we also get a highly efficient code which can be solved with the usual gradient descent style solvers like Adam solver in order to get a quick result on this control action. Uh, I would also argue that DPC in contrast to model predictive control even requires less expert knowledge about control engineering, which this representation of the closed form control loop is all about, but it basically uh, is a transfer of what we have learned regarding neural ordinary differential equation identification. Now, not with respect to system identification, but with respect to control policy identification, such that I can manipulate a system in a certain way. So, quite uh, related to that. So far, to the concept and to the optimization problem behind, let's go into a specific example. 
And the example which I've prepared, uh, so here we just see the, uh, some preliminaries as we have also seen here on the light board. But the example which I have prepared for you is basically uh, the same example which Sebastian already used in one of his previous uh, videos on uh, MPC in order to also compare a little bit uh, the different control techniques and that is the duffing oscillator. So what we see here is the nonlinear representation of the duffing oscillator with uh, two states and uh, one control action U of T for which we are trying to find a control policy. Our task is that if we have an initial state which is not at the origin that we want to go to the origin, so that means that our reference is 0, 0. So from some starting state, we want to go to the 2, 0 states. Therefore, giving this high level view on the uh, problem and on our reference, what we do is as a stage cost term, we formulate the mean squared error between the actual output of the system, which in this example is identical to the two states. So we don't consider any measurement noise, but just a direct um, accessibility of the states via measurements and our reference as I said of course is the zero point. So that's our problem and now we basically transfer what I've already said the uh, algorithmic implementation from the neural ordinary differential uh, implementation to this DPC problem and that will be how to find this policy pi which will basically generate these control actions here. Okay. In order to do that, uh, we start with setting up the duffing problem because I've said we need this model knowledge. Here for sake of simplicity, we assume that to be given. However, we could of course also model the duffing oscillator using data and uh, a node model or similar. Then we set up the general uh, simulation parameters. The reference here of course is zero, zero for all time steps as already discussed and here comes the control policy, which we represent via an artificial neural network, a very simple one. So just uh, two layers, one input layer, one output layer, no hidden layer, uh, just a few neurons, nothing big. And as an activation function of the output, we use the 10H. Now that's also a smart choice in that sense that the 10H will automatically limit the uh, control action to minus one and one, which is a, let's say, um, a proxy or um, the motivation behind is that, of course, the control action of any real world controller is limited and therefore our control policy cannot ask for infinitely large control actions, but they are decently limited between this minus one and one, which is an arbitrary choice, but just to model, okay, controllers, actuators have limited input capabilities. Okay, so this is then basically our um, control policy pi as an an. Uh, we will use, by the way, as we will see, six inputs, which are the two states as uh, our x or y, so two references and the two um, control errors. So because we have two signals, we also will have two control errors as an additional uh, input feature to the control policy. So that's why our input has a, a dimension of six. Okay. Um, then we basically put everything together. So we have our simulation problem, the duffing um, oscillator with the ANN as a control action. We have a prediction loop or prediction function. We have a loss function with the uh, mean squared error loss. And then we just do our normal stuff. So we formulate an optimization problem using optimization.jl. And we use a standard gradient descent solver, in this case the ADAM with a decent step size in order to solve the problem which goes a little bit down. Actually, the, the, the most of the gradient descent way is done before these 25 iterations here from the callback. But the interesting thing comes if we look at the solution or the, the result, and that's pretty it. So what we see here is that the DPC for the Duffing oscillator worked very well. Uh, if you compare it to MPC, I would say even uh, maybe a, li a little better. In that sense that after five seconds we are able to meet, or five to six seconds, we are uh, able to meet the origin, so our reference point, right? We want to go to the zero line here. And our starting state one and 0.5 are quickly uh, yeah, behind and we are reaching the reference here. So this is exactly what we are looking for. The control action here is also, uh, let's say, 
decent in that sense that in the first couple of seconds um, the controller utilizes the maximum possible control action in order to get going and then we have this yeah, let's say backlash behavior in order to send the states into the origin as quick as possible. And that's pretty it and I find this quite remarkable because uh, we could basically build this control loop bringing the Duffing oscillator back to the origin without any big knowledge about control engineering. Normally you have entire courses about control engineering in the bachelor and master but here what we did is basically we just transferred the idea of a neural ordinary differential uh, equation uh, optimization problem in terms of system identification to a manipulation slash control engineering problem and obviously here for this example it worked quite well. In the next video we will also see uh, another example where we also see some let's say challenges or potential drawbacks of DPC in comparison to other control techniques which of course we do not want to hide from you but um, I think this first example already uh, showcases the, let's say, potentials between DPC, especially when it comes to nonlinear uh, control engineering, as in this example. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.